If you're a knitter and have been wanting to design your own patterns but have not because it seems kind of intimidating, it's actually a lot simpler than you might think. And so today I want to go over the basics of how a mitten is constructed in the basic part because if you know how to knit and you can do a little bit of basic math, you can actually build your own patterns. Here we have a mitten that I recently designed. It's pretty basic except for this little slanted part. Depending on how you break it down, there are roughly five parts of a mitten. First I'll explain the five basic parts, then I'll explain how to determine the number of stitches to each part. First is the cuff, which is essentially a tube and often knit and rib stitch so that it's very stretchy and fits snugly against the wrist. Then comes the palm, which is a continuation of the cuff, so essentially it's a tube, except that the thumb gusset is attached at one side. The thumb gusset is an angled triangular extension at the side of the palm made by increasing stitches. The method for doing this can vary, but a lot of times it consists of two increases per every other row. The thumb is of course made by continuing the thumb gusset and is again essentially a tube that is rounded at the end with the use of decreases. And finally the fingers are again a simple tube, a continuation of the palm except for that it doesn't have the thumb gusset at the side. And the ends of the fingers are rounded or angled using a series of decreases. First, you'll need to determine how many stitches you're going to cast on here at the cuff edge. I use usually 36 stitches on size 6 or 7 needles, and this comes out to about 4.5 stitches per 1 inch, or 8 inches around my fingers and palm area. If you are using, for example, a finer yarn with a different gauge of, let's say, 6 stitches per 1 inch, you would need to cast on on 48 stitches to get that 8 inches around the palm. So once you get that figured out, you would cast on here at the cuff using double pointed needles and working in a circular fashion. For the cuff, generally you want to use a rib stitch. So either it would be 2x2, two 1x1, by 2x1, two, by 4x2, two by it really doesn't matter. So long as the number of stitches that you've cast on is divisible by the number of stitches in your rib pattern. So you would continue working this and once you got to this point, you could begin knitting in stockinette stitch, simply knitting across, not worrying about ribbing. At a certain point, which you would determine, you would want to begin with increases at the thumb gusset. The first row where you begin to increase, you might increase by one, but for the subsequent rows, you would want to increase by two stitches per every other row, or if you're doing something along this edge, you could do one stitch per one row. By the time you get to this point of your thumb, you can then place thumb stitches on a stitch holder and from that point you would continue knitting until you reach this point. If you want a more rounded decrease at the tips of your fingers you would work your decreases in even intervals around the tip. However if you want something with a more angular shape you could keep your decreases to the two edges of your mitten and then do a Kitchener stitch or some other stitch along here. Once you've completed this part of your mitten you're ready to pick up thumb stitches again. So you would take your double pointed needles and distribute these stitches evenly across those needles. You might have to add one or two or three stitches here at this point. From there though, you would continue working in the round and again begin your decreases at the thumb tip. Thank you for watching. I hope this has been somewhat helpful. I do intend to make more of these and perhaps go more in depth. If there's something you really want to see, let me know and I will make every effort to do that video. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.